Hey, it's time for Geek vs. Geek, where two nerds fight it out over all things tech. It's kind of like the Olympics, but without the guts or the glory or the medals. There may be some ice dancing, though. Keep your eyes on this one. Well, you've probably noticed we got a little upgrade over the break. Our brand new Geek vs. Geek studio. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, but with the same talent. Dave is the editorial director of eHow Tech and the author of three dozen books. Rick writes about technology for CNET, eHow, and elsewhere. He's also the author of The Cheapskate Rules, 21 Easy Money-Saving Tech Secrets. First up, we've got our segment, Worth It, where we take a look at a gadget that's been getting some buzz, but we're not sure if it's worth the investment. Guys, what are we talking about today? So this is the Revolve. It is a home automation gadget or a smart home gadget. A lot of people already have stuff in their house like a Sonos music system, the Nest thermostat, which I think we've talked about here on the show before. And all of those devices require different iPhone apps. So you have all these apps on your phone. This consolidates them all to a single app that you can do really smart things. You can program it so when I leave the house, it can automatically lock my front door, turn off the lights, and turn the thermostat down. And when I come home, it'll see me coming, unlock my front door, turn the lights on, turn the heat up, start playing my favorite music. It'll see you coming. Yes, can I please take issue with that? Because <laughs> this little thing, which I don't understand why this looks this way, but this doesn't see anything. It's it does not shaped. see you coming. Yes, it's, it makes you cry because you spent $300 on it. If you already have some of those home automation tools, you know, like a Nest and a Sonos and automatic door lock or something, adding this is worth it because it'll lets you take control over that stuff in a more comprehensive way. So it'll way. tie all your existing home automation doodads together in one. Right, but if, if you don't have all of those things I just talked about, then there's no point in getting this because it doesn't add anything. How many of these gizmos do you have to have before this becomes worth having? You know, if you have Sonos and you have the, those iPhone controlled lights, that's probably enough because you can do cool things with that. You can do cool things with that. In my, <laughs> in my decidedly non-Jetsonian house, I just, for, I don't, the whole home automation thing to me is kind of a waste and this is just extra waste on top of your additional waste. And why does it look like this? So basically the bottom line is, Dave thinks it's worth it if you have some existing home automation devices. Rick thinks totally not worth it because it just complicates your life. So last month you guys went to the Consumer Electronics Show and saw a lot of TVs and you complained that there wasn't a lot of innovation but I seem to think there's a lot of new TVs coming out right now so what's up, are you guys liars? You know, there are a lot of new TVs coming on the market and they're doing lots of different things, but I don't think any of it's innovative. We right? saw curved TVs, which I, to my thinking is the biggest joke that the TV industry has ever tried to foist upon the, the public. So you have a curved display so that you can sit right in that little middle sweet spot but you can't have your family and friends there with you because what they're going to be seeing is like nothing. If the curved screen is so awesome, then how come there are now making flexible screens where you press a button on your remote and it goes when it makes that sound <laughs> and the screen flattens. And then there's 3D. Now I think 3D's time has kind of come and gone. It, it did not succeed five years ago or four years ago. You still have to wear those stupid glasses. I like the glasses. There are new 3D TVs coming, and we saw them last year at Sound CES. Like. We saw them again this year at CES that are glasses-free 3D televisions. You can sit in front of it, see the 3D effect, but I tried a few this year, and the quality is still on par with those old 3D toys that you would have had as a kid. It's not good. Do you think that would make the difference, though, in, in it t catching on in the home, if you could do away with the glasses and just have the 3D? What would make the difference actually is if it was holographically projected right here in the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah. Not a screen, but it's just right here. Princess Leia on this table. So all that's really left is more resolution. The 4K TVs, which are about four times the resolution of HD. And then there's even 5K, and we saw 8K TVs right. at the show. It's like a marathon. We're just packing more <laughs> pixels in. We're not making TV 
better. We're not innovating. I suppose the innovation that we're seeing with 4K TVs is that the prices are starting to come down. I think Vizio announced uh, a 999 4K TV of maybe like 50 or 55 inches. And at that point, if you're choosing between that and a non 4K TV, well, okay, sure, I'll get the 4K TV with the hope that the content will follow. Netflix is starting to develop some 4K material. So the content may come, and this may be the year that we start to see 4K maybe start to make some inroads. Okay, so the bottom line is, was this year CES really innovative? Not for TVs. It was bereft of TV innovation. Are you guys arguing the same side on this argument? It's one of those rare cases where we are in agreement. Do it. Do it. Yay! <laughs> Hey, remember back in the days of records when you used to debate what albums you'd take with you on a deserted island? Well, that's the idea behind Desert Island Tech. So let's find out what Dave and Rick think is their one essential piece of gear that they cannot live without this week. Rick, you want to start? My pick for this week is something that has to do with music, and it is the Matrix Audio Cube 2. It is a little portable speaker. And you might think to yourself, well, a speaker this small has got to sound terrible. But the Cube is actually surprisingly powerful for its size. I've listened to it in a kind of what I would call a medium-sized room, and it really fills the room with music. And is this Bluetooth enabled? Or? This is a Bluetooth enabled speaker. It has exactly one control, which is a play, pause, power, pairing button does it all, and it gives you about eight hours of playtime. So it's just a really nice, convenient little speaker to bring along with you wherever you go. Did you say how much it cost? The Cube 2 is $79.99, which is on the pricey side for a Bluetooth speaker, but it's so small and so compact and so very nice sounding that I think, you know. I like it. You know. I like that it comes in multiple colors. Yes. It's <laughs> I'm a girl and I like colors. Now, my Desert Island pick is, I think, a lot more practical. What if I told you that I had a camera, the Nikon One, AW1. That's in a bucket of water right that now. That is, it's an, inter it. it's an interchangeable lens camera, and it's good for 50 feet underwater. So I'm on the island, I'm going to go for a swim, I take this with me, I can scuba dive and take pictures of the lobsters, so when I come back up, we can look at the pictures and see which lobster we're going to eat for dinner. And you can also get our entire new set <laughs> wet. <laughs> I actually don't believe you that that is going to continue to well, function. Um, oh. Actually, I, I'm not sure if the camera can... There's Helen. Look at that. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now I've got Helen Hi. on it. Selfie. This is about $800 for the body and one lens, and you can add other lenses, obviously. If you are a scuba diver or a snorkeler and you like to, you know, use a camera underwater, this is so much easier than, like, having a big honkin' housing that the camera has to go into. Well, that about does it for another Geek versus Geek. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time. In the meantime, we're going to go all take pictures in Dave's bathtub. Let us know what you think on Facebook, Twitter, or email.